Ever wondered how to control LEDs in this sequential fashion? Or how does this digital roulette works? It is possible using this IC. In this video, we will explore how does this CD4017BE decade counter IC works. Let's get started. CD4017BE is a decade counter IC with 10 decoded outputs. In simple words, the IC continuously counts from 0 to 9 as long as power and clock pulse are provided. As you see, it is a 16 lead IC where pin 16 and pin 8 are VCC and ground respectively. Hence, these pins are responsible for providing power to the IC. Pin 15 is master reset pin which clears all the outputs. Pin 14 is input clock which determines the counting speed and helps to synchronize all operations within the IC. Pin 13 is output enable. It is used to update the existing outputs. Pin 12 is carry out. It is used to generate carry out while counting. Remaining pins that is pin 1 to 7 and pin 9 to 11 accounts for the 10 output pins. These are the pins where we will be connecting our LEDs. It is worth mentioning that lead number of the IC does not correspond to the output number. For example, first lead of the IC gives decoded output 5, whereas the third lead gives the decoded output 0. Hence we must refer to the pinout diagram before connecting the output pins of the LEDs. Let me give you a brief idea how this decade counter IC works. Counting takes place as the toggling of output pins sequentially from output 0 to output 9. This is called decoded output. During this process, two outputs never get high simultaneously. Here is timing diagram. At the top, you can see a clock pulse that is given to trigger an action in the IC. Here we see reset pin has been pulled down to avoid reset of the decoded outputs. The clock enable pin is active low, hence it is grounded to enable updating of the output leads. Initially the output 0 is high. Toggle of the next output occurs on the rising edge of the clock signal. Hence, at this rising edge output 1 will be pulled high and output 0 will be pulled low. At the next rising edge, the same procedure is repeated. After the last output pin has been toggled, the IC resets itself and the whole process starts again. The carryout pin remains high for output 0 to 4 and low for output 5 to 9. Let's get our hands dirty. Firstly, I will provide 5 volts at pin 16 and ground at pin 8 of the IC. Pin 15 is the master reset pin, hence to avoid reset of the output pins, it must be grounded. Pin 13 is the output enable. Because it is active low, hence we must ground it to enable the outputs. Now it's time to connect all the output pins to LEDs via 330 ohm register to limit the amount of current flowing through LEDs. As you see in the pinout diagram, the output 0 at the third pin will be connected to the first LED. The output 1 at the second pin will be connected to the second LED and so on. Let me finish all the output connections. The circuit diagram and data sheet are available in the description section below. Now let us provide the input clock signal to the chip. There are many ways to generate a clock pulse. I have used a 555 timer IC. You can also use blink sketch of Arduino for clock generation. I will be explaining the clock generation using 555 timer IC in a future video. This is my clock signal at pin 14. We can leave the carryout pin for now. When I connect the power to the breadboard, the desired output has been achieved. A sequential LED blinking from LED 1 to LED 10. 
This circuit is one of the fundamental circuits you can make at home. It's called an LED chaser circuit. It's not over yet. Let me increase the frequency of the clock pulse by replacing the capacitor with a smaller value. You see, as I increase the clock speed, the overall counting speed has also increased. If I decrease the frequency by replacing the capacitor with a larger value capacitor, the overall speed will also be decreased. At this speed, we can confirm the fact that toggling of the output occurs at the rising edge of the clock pulse. When the clock pulse goes low, that is the falling edge, there is no change in the output. But as soon as the clock pulse goes high, the rising edge, the output is changed. If you don't have a 555 timer IC or if you want to use Arduino for clock generation then just open the Arduino IDE then go to file examples basic and then blink sketch void setup is usually used to initialize variables pin modes whereas the code written in void loop repeats itself continuously in void setup, the command pin mode LED built in output declares the built in LED as output. We can obtain this output at digital pin 13 as the built in LED is internally connected to it. In the void loop, digital write LED built in high will pull the digital pin 13 to 5 volts. The delay function takes parameters in milliseconds. So passing 1000 means creating a delay of 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. Digital write LED built in low will pull down the digital pin to ground. Again we have to give delay to create a perfect clock pulse. You can change the parameter passed to the delay function to change the frequency of the clock pulse. 500 millisecond will be a good delay. Now let's compile the code and upload this sketch. Our sketch has successfully uploaded to the microcontroller. After connecting the D13 pin of the microcontroller to the clock pin of the IC, we can see our LED chaser circuit is working fine. Now let us understand the use of output enable and master reset pins. If I connect the enable pin to 5 volts, the output gets stuck at the very state I pulled enable pin high. In simple words, the updating of the output pins has been disabled. This property is very useful to freeze the circuit at a given state. Let me resume the outputs. Now let us look at the reset pin. Observe what happens if I connect the reset pin to the output pin 7, that is the 8th LED pin. The counter suddenly decreases to the first 7 LEDs only. The remaining 3 LEDs are ignored. Similarly, if I connect the reset pin to the output pin 4, that is the 5th LED pin, then the output is truncated to only first 4 LEDs. We can deduce the master reset pin can be used to truncate the number of desired outputs. At last, the pin 12, the carry out pin. This pin remains high for the first half of the outputs and remains low for the second half of the outputs. It is worth noting that truncating the number of outputs using the reset pin does not affect the working of the carry out pins, meaning it will remain high for output 0 to 4 and low for output 5 to 9. This video was an overview of the CD4017BE Decade Counter IC. Stay tuned to learn how to make digital roulette circuit using the same Decade Counter IC. Till then, be safe, keep learning, and I will see you in my next video.